Welcome to this brand new channel with this brand new series on how to use the Hacks Flexor game framework. I'm your host, uh, John, and let's get us started. So uh, don't worry, I have all the links down in the description below. So personally, I have always had a bit of a sweet spot for Hacks Flexor since I found it. It's very intuitive to use and also extremely easy to learn. It is based on the Flash Flexel um, game framework as far as I know and you can see from the website it's pretty cool it's extremely cross-platform so you have all three desktop environments well yeah I, I don't know about BSD but yeah so you have Windows, Linux and Apple then you have Android, iOS and then you sort of have Flash although I don't really know why you would want to try and support it in today's time unless you do it for like a weird community but then by all means do you do you and then you also have html5 and then they come with 50 demos uh 80 demos i mean sorry with the, all the source code available so you can go through the demo look at it and be like okay now how do i implement this so you go look at the code and you find out as you see here, it is it uses the hacks programming language OpenFL, which is a hacks and Node.js derivative, Node.js version of Flash, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the Flash like library. But don't quote me on that; I might be completely mistaken. And the Flixel um, Flash framework, and that together makes the hacks Flixel game framework. To get things started, they have a tutorial on setting everything up, which is pretty cool since they go through installing hacks, installing hacks Flexel, and then running a basic Hello World program, which don't worry, I'll go through this with you just to make sure that you can see how it's set up. If you notice any issues on your side, you can be like, okay, wait, so this guy's work, but mine doesn't, so where's the issue? So you don't have to be like, ah, oh, this entire thing's balked. Let's just give up. And then if you have any issues, you can just ask down in the comments and I'll try to help you best I can. So to get things started, we need to install the Hacks programming language, which in itself is also very easy to use, especially if you are if you come from a job of um, action script or c -sharp background. It uses cl um, classes and things like that, so you will see it's extremely easy to work with. You can, if you're on Windows, you can use both 64 or 30-bit installer, 32-bit uh, installers. On OS X, you also have the installer. On Linux, you have to use one of the package managers, which is pretty easy to use as well. Or if you want, you can probably build it from source, I think. Anyway, you feel free to check that out. Also, a uh, side note, uh, at the time of this recording, only the 4.1.5 is the newest version that you can use with Hexflexel. I tried on 4.2.0, uh, but for some reason it has a lot of issues. So you can't compile your things at all. So I just stick to 4.1.5 unless that changes. And don't worry, the um, link here should take you to the right one. If you look down the bottom left, you can see it takes you to the 4.1.5 version. After you have that installed, you can open your um, command prompt or terminal, depending on your operating system, and just type X. If you see a screen like that, then you know it should be working. So you can... The one really awesome thing about Hacks is it cross compiles to other programming languages. So you can r compile to JavaScript, Lua, um, Flash files, Nico, which is, um, it, it, it's uh, a virtual machine, I believe. You can also target PHP, C++, um, C Sharp, Java, the Java virtual machine if you want it. Python HL, which is an, sort of like Nico, but newer, if I'm not mistaken. And you can just plainly interpret it as you go. And I would urge you to look at the um, programming language because it's really awesome and also really powerful, as far, especially with game development in mind. So after you have Hacks installed, you can go over to installing Hacks Flexel. And they give you a step-by-step -step, um, command 
that'll um, allow you to go through everything. But like I said, I'll just go through it with you just in case you wanted to. So we start off by installing everything we need. So it's install Lime. So it, the Hacks programming language comes with its own package manager, which I personally love. If you've ever tried to use C++ without Visual Studios, you would know it's an absolute pain in the ass to like link individual packages yourself. So I'm all for the newer programming languages that use a package manager. So after you have Lime installed, go over and install OpenFL, same way you install the um, Lime package. So you can see thus far it's extremely easy, extremely intuitive. Like you don't have to be like, oh, now I need to learn a build package or like tweak with or play with um, specific files to get things working. You just run a few commands and it does black magic in the background for all intents and purposes. And then finally you install Flexel. And by the way, because I already have it installed, it just shows that it is installed on my side. But whereas on your side, it'll download the packages and you'll have like a little thing saying downloading package, downloading um, dependencies of this package and so forth. So next up is um, setting up Flexel. No, wait, sorry. Um, to install the additional libraries for Flexel itself. So you go hack slip run line setup pixel. So this will go through make sure that you have um, all the dependencies installed and then we'll go through and also download the demos that I um, showed that was on the home page or 80 demos. And it will just make sure that everything is up and running and usable. So you can see it goes through each package to make sure it's up to date. And it even installed, so it installs um, the Hacks C++ to make sure that's up. You get the OpenFL samples, the um, Lime samples, Box2D, H uh, hack script, which is cool since it's like that a scripting language for the hacks programming language, if I'm not mistaken. It also goes through and installs add ons for Flixel uh, UI packages. So Flixel comes with its own UI package, so it's extremely powerful and by far one of the easiest. If you've ever used something like well, sort of STL, although that's more because I personally hate having to use CMake and SFML, but then again, I'm extremely biased. But if you go from something like that, where it's like you have to build most of the things to using something like this, where everything is given to you almost on a platter like you would with a game engine, except it's more programming orientated, it's wonderful. So after you have that set up, next you have to run the line setup. I know this spot is usually a bit boring and if I knew how to pause I would and if I knew how to edit videos I would so yeah. but first video so as time goes on we sh should get better at this so now you um, as you see it makes lime available as a command alias instead of running hacks run hacks lib run lime every time you can just go lime and it shows you everything you can do with Lime. So that's cool. So um, you would use Lime to compile to like Android and Windows and things like that, which is extremely awesome. So after you have done, you install the Flexel tools. And then, so this will give you the ability to have the, as with the line command interface, it will also give you the ability to use Flexel, if I'm not mistaken. 
to the hex lib, run pixel tools setup. So yes, I want the flexible command alias. And then my personal preference as far as default IDEs and text editors is Visual Studio Code. So just go with Visual Studio Code. Although you also have Flash Develop, which you can use IntelliJ IDE, which is a great Java um, IDE. I would definitely recommend it if you ever do Java programming. And you can do Sublime Text, although I've always preferred Visual Studio above, uh, Code above Sublime Text or even Atom above Sublime Text, but that's more peripheral uh, preference, personal preference. So you say Visual Studio Code, do you automatically, do you want to automatically open the created templates and demos with Visual Studio Code? Yes, I do. And cool, now it is up and running, so you can go Flexel. And you can see that now you have full um, the ability to create new um, projects and have things up and running. Now that your okay, so now that your development um, environment is set up, let's make sure it works. So let me just clear this out and then go over to. So let me just create a basic. Ah. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, so it's MD to open a command window on desktop, and then I go pixel TPL for template dash n for new, and then the um the name of your project. So in this case, just hello world. It will create it, and then because we set it up, it will automatically open in Visual Studio Code. Now, if you have Visual Studio Code, um, you would go and install the following packages. So you want the codex, um, hashlink debugger, hacks, hacks, check style, hacks extension package, hacks test explorer, hacks C++ debugger, lime, and that should be about it. It'll just make the development a bit easier since you don't have to, it'll give you um, syntax highlighting um, completion of things. So as you type, it'll be like, so you can go text equals FLX text. So you can see it has the suggestions of what you might want, so, which is really cool and it also, auto import it for you so that you don't have to be like okay um you have to type it out and you have to remember where each package is you can just type it out completely now just to make ah close out things just to follow along with this more specifically just want to make sure that i don't deviate and do something dumb again okay cool so we create a new FLX text, um, a new text object. We put it at zero, zero. Come on. It's always annoying when that happens. Oh, yeah. New FLX text. And then it says, where's your X? You say zero. Where's your Y? You say zero. Um, field width, you could just leave at zero. So the string, what it, you wanted to say specifically. So here you would say hello world as per all as per usual. So like should be the first thing you do when you create a new thing. Uh, 64. And then you can just close it down. You say text dot screen center. This will just put it in the center of the screen. And then you want to add it to your scene so that your scene would be aware of it and so that you would be able to display things with so with things like sprites and text and UI. You always want to add it to your scene, otherwise you can like instantiate it, create it, 
that it will never show up and you, you would end up wondering why that happened. Now, yes, one of the ex big benefits of using Visual Studio Code, although I don't haven't used the others, so maybe the others also have this, you can go over here and click on this, and here you can see all the compilation, all the things you can compile your program to, so you can target HTML5 directly. You can target Air, Android, Electron, Flash, Hash Link, which I personally usually go for since um, it's just a bit easier than working in the browser in personal preference. You can also compile to Windows itself, although um, if you want to compile to Windows specifically, you have to have the Windows, uh, the Win32 um, C++ package installed, which usually means, so you just need to be able to build desktop applications using Visual Studio specifically. can't remember the package name of it, but you need it to be installed if you want to use compile to Windows directly, although you don't have to, and it's a bit of a long compilation, but you, I usually just go with Ashling debug, and then you press F5, and it'll start the compilation, and it has full debugging features, so you, as far as I believe you can use breakpoints, you have um, terminal output, so you can put in like trace to see what values of your things are and all those things that you would need if you were trying to figure out why something wasn't working, which, trust me, I've used a few times. I spent like the last half day trying to figure out how to just shoot a, a projectile from my character to where the mouse was pointed and driving me absolutely mad. And I used a lot of the debugging features during that time, so it's definitely very um, useful as far as debugging goes. And the compilation takes a bit of time, but it's really not that long. Like, you won't go out of your head. And you can see that you have Hello World showing on your thing. So, think, uh, and also it runs on your graphics card. So if you have a dedicated graphics card, you can use that as well. Cool. Until next time. Enjoy your day.